Bible says that the Jews, they seek for signs, and the Gentiles, they seek for profound sounding theories and theologies. They will preach Jesus crucified. Amen. So in that light, our sermons in this branch will become plain and simple and yet of the Spirit of God. And it will follow a pattern. That's my conviction. It will follow a pattern. And if you are not in the habit of paying attention, you will miss the pattern. May you not miss what God has for you in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless your holy name for this privilege to stand before your people, the apple of your own eyes, precious in your sight, redeemed by the very blood of Jesus Christ. I stand at one stem as one of them and not one over them. And I ask the Lord Jehovah God Almighty that you use this deep of, of play of mine to bring forth that which is your heart intent for us, individually and collectively as a people, and move up from where we are to where next we ought to be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The title of our sermon today is Lightning Physical Needs to Spiritual Necessities. Lightning Physical Needs to Spiritual Necessities. Lightning Physical Needs to Spiritual Amen. Lightning Physical Needs to Spiritual Necessities. A profound but often underplayed truth is that every born again Christian is a tripartite being. Tripartite being means you are three in one. Say with me, three in one. It is a profound but often underplayed truth. We are made up of spirits or rather not made up. We are spirits with a soul and we live in what is called a humus body. Humus, H-U-M-U-S, humus. That is the Latin word for death or for earth or for clay or for soil. Now if you have ever read the book of Genesis, you will know that God formed man out of what? So that thing you call human is a hybrid word of humus and the man. Who man? Who what? Man. Who man? It's a double compound word that fused over time. It used to be humus dash man. Then they compress it more to make it one word. It becomes who man. Who? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, from the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We want to lay the ground, the ground for what we are up to now. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. In there, God says, and God says, let us make man in what? Our own image. After our what? Likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over all every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That is the full verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1. But where we want to take is a portion of it. A portion of it. If you have a King James Version, it will mean those ones before the semicolon. He says, and God says, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, semicolon. Now we know from scriptures that God is what? Spirit. Yes or no? Does anybody not know that so far in this branch? God is what? Spirit. So if God says, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness, what does that mean? It means man is made in the image of spirit, in the likeness of what? Spirit. It is the fall of Adam that made that spirit element to die, and man became more of humus than human. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So that tells you that we are spirits because we are made in the image of God and the likeness of God who is what? Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 3 verse 6. John chapter 3 verse 6. You will do well to follow me in your own Bible. And if I have any suspicion you are not following, I will just call you to read the verse that I have quoted. And I will not wait for you to find it when you are called. So you do well to be following with your Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 3 verse 6. It says therein, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit. Again, if you have a King James Bible, I'm so, and hopefully one of the good translations, you will see that spirit is capitalized S. And I've told us in this branch, anywhere it is capitalized S, it is the Holy Spirit. If it is a small letter S, it could be human spirit or demon or any other type of spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister. John 3, 6. He says there, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, when you are born of the flesh, it means you are born by your mama born you. That's what it means. Born of the flesh means what? Your mama born you. In some places in the Bible, you say that who is born of a woman. Amen. And when we want to pray some great dangerous prayer in MFM, which I don't think we have prayed in this branch before, we will say, whosoever is born of a woman or taken from a woman, because some people are not born of a woman, they were taken from a woman by a cesarean session. So with that experience, they have gone on to become wicked agents. And if you pray born of a woman, you will miss them. The arrow will come near them and pass. Because they were not born, they were taken from a woman. So we cover them. We cover them in deliverance. Anybody born of a woman or taken from a woman, then we shoot arrow. Then we will see how they will vanish. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We will see how they will vanish. That the Geo says, when you have a dangerous situation, you pray dangerous prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why I say you will see some people refer to some people as born before. You cannot be born again except you have been born before. Because the word again means something before happened. Are you following me? And Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. The word born again was first introduced in the scriptures by the mouth of Jesus himself. So he knew that for you to be born again, you have to be born before. So the person who is born before is born of the flesh. But the person who is born again is born of the Holy Spirit. And the scripture is telling us that he who is born of the Holy Spirit is what? You are not looking into your Bible. I'm not asking you a dodgy question. I'm asking you plain question that is in your scripture there that you are looking at. John chapter 3 verse what? 6. What does it say? That which is born of the flesh is what? Flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. So if you are born again, what are you? He didn't say you are spiritual. God, those are two different things. He says you are what? Spirit. One of the adverts that caught my eye when I was new in England, I used to live in a place called uh, Essex. What is that place? Dagenham. No, not Dagenham. Huh? Back in, praise the name of the Lord. And the train station, they have to have a lot of buses again. Then they were inventing a thing, what they call a. What's that thing they used to blame for me, my daughter? Smoothie. Yes, smoothie was being invented in those days, 2023. Then there was a bus advert, they had this smoothie advert. It says, smoothie is not made from fruit, smoothie is fruit. There's a difference. It's not made from fruit, it is fruit. You are not spiritual, you are spirit. I'm not going to teach English language, but you can go and find the difference. You are not spiritual. To be spiritual means you have an attribute. But to be spirit means you are God, God, spirit. Why some of you are afraid of spirit, afraid of ghosts? It's because you don't know you are spirit. 
you are running from something. You don't know. Hey, the spirit, the, the spirit is because you don't know you are spirit. You have not been reading your Bible. He who is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. So don't settle for being spiritual. Become who you are supposed to be in Christ. One foremost man of God in Nigeria is now going to be with the Lord. Uh, what's his name? Archbishop Etahosa. Praise the name of the Lord. Anytime the witches want to have a meeting in the state where he is, he says he's going there. Because as far as he's concerned, the big witch will eat the small witch. Praise the name of the Lord. And he saw it from the scriptures in the book of Colossians that Jesus is the head of principalities and powers. He is the head, Jesus himself, he is the head of principalities and powers. But when you don't know who you are in Christ, you are there, uh, there is one spirit, there is one spirit. What are you? You don't know what you are. That's why the spirit is frightening you. So I'm laying a foundation for us that we are spirit. Another one we quickly want to see is 1 Corinthians 6, 7. Amen. 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 When I keep saying it, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, it says therein, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this scripture lets us understand that though you are spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body, therefore you are three in one. And if you are not sanctified wholly, it means your spirit might be good, your soul has come in it. Your body has come in it. Praise the name of the Lord. But if you are sanctified wholly, it means holistically, you are good. Your spirit is in health, your soul is in health, your body is in health, and I'm using the word health theoretically to include you are where you desire to be. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the word man, which I said earlier on, the word man means originally spirit being. Thus, a born again woman is the combination of a spirit with a soul that lives in a body. And I say, if you know, you know. Now we are moving to the, to the main body of our sermon. There are six basic needs for spirit, for physical survivability. Six basic needs for physical survivability. So even though you are spirit, you are still body and soul. You are still a physical being. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What are those six basic needs for physical survivability? Number one, in order of priority, essence, and whatever. Number one is oxygen. Some people call it air. So you can call it air if it helps you understand. But oxygen is that component in air that you and I, as human beings, we breathe. So to be physically alive, physically in way being, to be physical, to have physical welfare, you ought to have and must have oxygen, air that you breathe. When you are not breathing, you will feel suffocating, you will feel choked, you will feel unwell. Those who have ever been out of breath, either from exercise or from exertion or from e health or whatever, knows the symptom and knows it's not a good place to be, yes or no? Next thing you need as a physical human being is water. You need water. In fact, 70% of our body is made up of water. Our brain, by weight, is more water than anything else. And when you don't drink enough water, you dehydrate. And when you are short of water, your body begins to shut down. Either the acidic or the alkaline or whatever solution in your body will rise beyond the healthy proportion. So water is needful for your physical health. Number three, three is food. And this is one that people have even elevated above oxygen in their life. 
those that have uh, is it to do grow spirit? Praise the name of the Lord. We call them glutons. Some people now food is competing with oxygen in their life. Some people eat more food than they drink water. Some people you have to prompt them and remind them to drink water, but not food. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that is the spirit. Spirit of Glutony. It's a spirit. It's a very strong spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. So food is necessary for physical survivability. The next one is shelter. Shelter. Some of us are so used to shelter that we have taken it for granted. But you need to see somebody who is homeless on the street. Then you will know what God has done for you. Some of you come and give testimony. You will not give. Because you don't see. There is nothing. You don't see anything that is being done for you. You have got so entitled mentality that the only time you are waiting that God has done for is when he, when he removes your Biden and puts you there. That's the time you come to give testimony. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, he that is not faithful in little will not be faithful in much. You are not faithful in giving testimony in little things. How are you going to be faithful in giving testimony when the big one comes? Because it's the big one now. Some of the time why people come to give big testimonies is that they want to indirectly beat their chest and show that uh, I am the guy. Okay. You know, God, God. In fact, we had tea the other day. That's why God, God has given me credit in my bank now. I have 100,000 pounds. Mm. That's the only testimony they are waiting. And God said, you will wait and wait and wait and wait. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because they are waiting to give testimony that's bigger than every other person's own. That is the spirit of pride. Spirit of pride is what is worrying them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The next thing we need is exercise. Exercise. Even in the hospital, people who are sick, they try to get them up, to take a walk, to move around, to get, to get some exercise. It's needful for our physical survivability. Praise the name of the Lord. The last but not the least in this six, and it's not an exhaustive list, is rest. It's rest. Even Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he was resting in the boat when the storm stirred up in the Sea of Galilee. And also he did say to his disciples, come and rest. Have something to eat. So rest is needful for our physical survivability. Now if you understand this so far, say I get it. Amen. So now we have cathed for the physical beat, which I'm sure you very much understand. Because all of us are more physical than we ought to be. Amen. Now pay attention. What is the corresponding spiritual necessity to these six things in the realm of this physical? That's where we are going. Amen. Because you didn't need me to tell you you need oxygen. You didn't need me to tell you you need food. Some of you ate even before it was his day. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And you think you are smart. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You will not die of food. That is what the devil has deceived you. You will not die of food. You will not die of food. Your body has the ability to sustain itself. That is scientific. Some of you believe science that you believe the scriptures. And I'm sorry you. And that's why I said to you scientifically because that's what's the one that will catch your conviction. Amen. What is oxygen in the realm of the spirit? Oxygen or spiritual growth. Now I begin to pay attention. The oxygen, now remember I told us we are what? Spirit. Amen. Spirits don't pick their fingernails when three things are being taught. Amen. The oxygen of spiritual growth is prayer. The oxygen of spiritual growth is prayer. When you are a Christian, you don't have appropriate and sufficient prayer life in your in, in prayer habit and prayer life. Your spirit will feel suffocated just the way your body feels when it doesn't lack, when it doesn't have oxygen. Your spirit will be feel exacerbated just the way your body feels when it's not getting enough quality air. So the oxygen of spiritual growth is what? Pray here. So anytime you're feeling that you don't have enough air in your spirit, anytime you're feeling suffocating in your spirit, anything you're feeling choked, those are symptoms of prayerlessness in your life. Your spirit being, your spirit man, some people call it spirit man just to help us. That means your spirit being is lacking spiritual oxygen as a believer. 
Number two, the water of spiritual growth is worship. The water of spiritual growth is what? Worship. When you are not worshiping God, or you are worshiping mama, or you are worshiping your job, or you are worshiping your child, or you are worshiping your mother, or you are worshiping your husband. Some people worship their husband, and some people worship their wife, and some people worship their children. In fact, that is most common. Some people worship their children. That's what they worship. But when they say they lift up their hand to worship God in church, they put their hand in the pocket. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When you are not worshiping the true God, the I am, the I am, the ancient of days, the beginning and the, and the last, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who has saved you and redeemed you, who formed you, when you are not worshiping him, you will be spiritually dehydrated. Spiritually what? Dehydrated. The water of spiritual growth is what? Worship. Amen. The Bible is, is simple, but the Bible is dangerous. There is somewhere a verse in the Bible. God says, hey, When I was calling you, you did not hear, you did not answer. When you will be calling me, I will not hear, I will not answer. It's in your Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of you, the time to worship God, no. You are waiting until there is a problem. Then when there is a problem, you go, oh God, I worship you. You think God, God is omniscient. He knows. You can't draw a wool and run. He knows that you are worshiping him because problem, you want to present something. He knows. And worship means, and we covered it last time we talked about prayer, the rest of it. Worship means worshiping God for whom he is. not what you are going to get out of him. Not what you are going to get out of him. The prophet Habakkuk, he says, even if the, even if the sheep don't give, give to cow, even if there is no food, even if there is nothing, I am still going to worship God. When you are not a worshipful Christian, or you are worshipping things that are not the true God, whether you are deceived or not, ignorance is no excuse, both in law and in the things of the spirit. You become dehydrated. You become dehydrated. Some of us, most of us that God answers when we have problems, He's answering us out of His mercy. Not because we are now worshiping Him. He knows. He knows why you came. Jesus said to the other people, Ah, you came because you ate bread yesterday. I know why you came. It's not me you came. With. You came because I made you English breakfast. And you're expecting now that I will give you another one with, with onions and the mushroom and the spaghetti on top. You're expecting a better, that's why you, you have not come. I know why you came. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Like I've said before, you cannot deceive God. You cannot even deceive the devil. You cannot deceive the devil. You cannot deceive angel. You cannot deceive demon. The only person you can deceive is yourself or another person. You can't even deceive a dog. A dog, you can't deceive a dog. They have their sense of smell and sight that you don't. You cannot deceive a dog. Pussycat, you can't deceive pussycat. So the only two people left for you to deceive, yourself and another person who has fallen gullible to you or who has trusted you in error. Either they are gullible or they trusted you in error. That's the only two people you can deceive. You can't deceive God, you can't deceive angel, you can't deceive demon, you can't deceive uh, Satan. So all the smart, smarter than you that you're doing is to yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Food. The food of spiritual growth is Bible reading and studying. This food of spiritual growth is Bible what? Reading and studying. If you're a Christian, you're not married to your Bible, you're not in romance with the scriptures, you will have what is called spiritual kwashoko. Now, kwashoko is an English language, but some of you might think I made it up. You can Google it. Kwashoko is an English. It means malnutrition. Ma what? Malnutrition. Some people, the only Bible they know is the one to deal with which. That is the only one they know. They don't know the one that says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Praise them. They don't know that one. 
They don't know the one that says you shall honor the Lord their God with all their They don't know that one. They don't know the one that says, as much as it depends on you, be at peace with us. They don't know that one. So they, are, they have mal, 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 what did I call it before? Malnutrition. Uh -huh. That's what they are suffering from. Because the food of spiritual good is Bible reading and Bible study. Those of you who will never attend Monday Bible study, neither do you do anyone on your own. You are doing yourself. You are doing yourself. Is it that I haven't died? Uh, if you're listening, you're talking, it's that I haven't died. Why you are haven't died is because spirit don't die, but you're sick. Spirit will not die. That's why you have not died. But you're not breathing well. You're not hydrated. You're not nourished. Because you don't have these meals. <laughs> but you're still moving about because spirit will not die. The form of death for spirit is alienation from God. Alienation from God. Alienation from God. That's why the Bible says eternal death is separation from God. You are still alive, but you are considered dead because you are far from God. So by that definition, devil is the most dead spirit. He is the most what? Dead spirit because he is the most alienated of all spirits from God with his cohorts of demon. Amen. Shelter, number four. The shelter of spiritual growth. The shelter of spiritual growth is fellowship. Fellowship is the shelter of spiritual growth. Fellowship is the shelter of spiritual growth. The Bible says two is better than one because if one falls down, another will lift him up. So when you don't have fellowship with fellow believers, you don't have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you are a homeless spirit being. You are not sheltered from the elements of the spirit world. You are not sheltered from the arrows and the wise of the devil. You have no fellowship. You are a lone wolf. Fellowship and the more genuine and the more true fellowship, the better the shelter you have in the spirit. You know that prophet, he said to his servant, those who are for us are more than those who are again. When he opened the servant's eye, he saw the angels, on, which means there is the fellowship of angels with them. But when you remove yourself from church, remove yourself from every church meeting, to bring you to church is a drag. They are dragging you. But to go to night club, before the, even the DJ arrives, you are there. You come before the DJ comes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You come before the DJ comes. Amen. Shelter of spiritual growth is fellowship. Now we are to exercise. The exercise of spiritual growth is witnessing. Witnessing. We call it evangelism. The exercise of spiritual growth is what? Weaknessing. In the physical, if all you eat, you don't exercise. <laughs> Even the doctors will sorry you. Praise the name of the Lord. The doctors will sorry you. Many years ago, when my children used to be very little, and we used to have a Bible study and all that on Saturday morning, somebody, grace of God and the leading of the revelation of the Holy Spirit, I posed a question. In the physical, when you overeat, you become obese. In the physical, when you overeat, you become obese, especially with no exercise and all that. In the realm of the spirit, when you overfeed, you will glow. You will glow as light. The more you are overfed in the things of the spirit, the brighter your light. So spirits don't grow fat as in they cannot enter a door because they can pass through a wall. So that's not their type of fatness. Some of you always think physical. You don't think spiritual and that's where your problem is. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as a spirit being, the way you exercise, and when I say spirit being, I mean born again because we have established that a born again person is born of the spirit. A born of young person is created in the image and the likeness of God. So your spiritual exercise is witnessing. 
And witnessing is not about conversion of people to Christ. The conversion is done by the Holy Spirit. Your own is a weakness. See what God has done. A weakness. Let's say police say we are looking for weakness. They are saying, who saw what happened? Who experienced what happened? So yourself as a weakness, you are witnessing to the grace of God, to the grace of salvation. Because you have seen it, you have experienced it, you are living it. So in your own word and in your own way, just convey it. Witness what you have seen in your life. That is all about. Leave the conversion to God. It's the Holy Spirit that will convert using your weakness. So we are not saying go and convert people. No, it's converted. The conversion is by you. If it's going to do it, you do it through you. But weaknessing is your own deal. Say my own deal. God is not going to remove your deal and give the angel. Because if he gives your deal to the angel, then the benefit for that deal will have to be given to the person who did the work. It is not a case of mocking the work, baboon the chop. Amen. The last but not the least is rest. Say with me, rest. Rest. The rest for spiritual growth is called faith. The rest for spiritual growth is called faith. When you see people fritting about, when you see people perturbed and disturbed, when you see people jumping up and down like a headless chicken, it means spiritually they are not at rest. And why they are not at rest in spiritually is because their faith is either faulted, flawed, or non-existent. The evidence of rest in the spirit is living a carefree life of praises unto God. Not carefree as in recklessness. Not carefree as in ignorance. Not carefree as in naivety. Not carefree as in fatalism. What will be, will be if man die. Man, man die but once. You know, somebody says you are not dying but once. You die many times, you live once, you live continuously. So you man die but once, you go see, and when you open your eye after that, you die. You will know where you went and uh, end up in. Praise the name of the Lord. So just to recount it as we move on, amen? Six physical things we have, exam- we have examined, oxygen, water, food, shelter, exercise, rest. Corresponding six things in the realm of the spirit, the oxygen of spiritual growth is prayer, the water of spiritual growth is worship, the food of spiritual growth is Bible reading and studying. The shelter of spiritual growth, because you need shelter to grow. You cannot be out in the elements and grow. The shelter of spiritual growth is fellowship with believers and the Holy Ghost. The exercise of spiritual growth is weakness. You can't even tell your neighbor that you're a Christian. Some of you that work on Monday morning, your work colleague will say, ah, uh, we, this weekend, uh, we rocked it, we, we lose our skirt, our skirt fall for ground, and we went to where they do doggy. Uh, then when they finish all that one, you'll be looking, and then they'll say, how about you, how was your weekend? He said, fine. And you came to church. You cannot even say that you came to church. You're afraid to say you came to church. And they have told you all that they did in their own church, which is night club. They have told you all that they did in their own church, which is, um, I don't know the name they call it. Some of them have some nudist group they belong to, even on a, on a telegram. Praise the name of They have told you all the one they did in their own church. Now they give you golden opportunity. They give you golden opportunity. What did you do over the weekend? He <laughs> said nothing. Nothing, what? Praise the name of the Lord. A child of God, bold as a lion. You can't say. Amen. And then, since you say nothing, they will take your own time that you are meant to use out of their own time and tell you more of what they did. You're lacking spiritual exercise. I remember some years ago, I used to work for one company. We came for a very big meeting with a customer. And the head of the team, one white woman, before the team we start, she started talking about the bad day of her dog. And we spent 15 minutes talking about the bad day of her dog. Hi! I was like this. Is it to, to be a good dog? She has the audacity to talk about the bad day of dog. And I'm sitting here, I cannot even talk about church. It paid me no be small. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And some of you, when they say uh, uh, happy holidays, you, you nod your head like that. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I didn't know that dog has bad day. And that it become a subject. Time paid by unpaid money. We are using it to talk about bad day of dog. God will help us. The benefit of spiritual growth. We want to go to the benefit because I know some of us are well me to alive benefit. What are the benefits of spiritual growth? Benefit of spiritual growth, we are more beneficial to God. The more you grow spiritually, the more beneficial you are to God. The more beneficial you are to God. And God is an investor. Nobody will sacrifice a beneficial thing for a non-beneficial thing. That's why some of you, when you go and quarrel with one man of God, you are challenging one man of God and all that, yeah, 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 I do, I'm a great. God will just waste you. Because you're unprofitable, you are not beneficial. Convert a shish, you will not convert. You are talking with a man of God that, that has yielded himself to God. God is using him to bring millions of souls from the camp of the devil to you, you that even your own soul, you are not fighting for it. If you are the businessman, which one would you choose? As you get sense rich, if you are the businessman, which one would you choose? So the more we grow in spirit, the more we are beneficial to God. Number two benefit. The more we grow in spirit, and you see that in first in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 8. So these are coming from scriptures. You see that in Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. This is not just me cajoling you or making things up. They have spiritual biblical basis. And by the grace of God, you will see this uh, sermon outline in the WhatsApp group. So you can take it, research more into it, like the Berean Christians, ask some questions, bury yourself deeper into it, and be better. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Being spiritually grown or spiritual growth has the benefit of us being productive in God's vineyard. 2 Timothy 1.8. Sorry, 2 Peter 1.8. So the more we grow in the things of the Spirit, the more we are productive in the vineyard of God. Remember the story that or the, the, the thing that Jesus talked about? Uh, the Father said, uh -uh, this tree now is not bringing any fruit. Oh, we need to cut it down. And Jesus says, just give me one more time. I will dig around it. I will put some fertilizer. I will surround him with some men of God. I will surround him with some teachers who teach the word of God. I will surround him with some choir people that really sees and not sing anointed praises. I will surround him with some, uh, some ideas of what to find Bible teaching on the uh, internet instead of going to look for pornography on the internet. I will surround him. In fact, I will change his class teacher and bring a teacher that, know, that believes so that uh, he will not, I will surround him. Although when we surround him with that, uh, just give us some time. If we surround him with that and he's still unproductive, we will cut him down. And God will surround those things, change circumstances, change circumstances. You will still refuse to be productive. You will remain a barren tree. The more God comes after you, the more you're hardened. Number three, benefit of spiritual growth. We become better decision makers. Seven, second Peter chapter 1, verse 9. We become better decision makers. We make decisions by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We make decisions based on the value system of the kingdom of God. We become better decision makers. Another benefit of spiritual growth. We are eternity and heaven focused. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 9, Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 2. So spiritual growth has the benefit of making you to be heaven focused, heavy minded, eternally minded, not earthly minded. One of the ways you know a typical unbeliever and a good unbeliever, a typical unbeliever looks forward to Friday because most parties and clubbing is done on Friday. A good believer looks forward to Sunday. A typical unbeliever looks forward to Friday. A good believer looks forward to Sunday. For the unbeliever, Friday night is his high, light, high time of his life. For the Christian, Sunday morning is a high time of his life. So there are 30 ways you can tell where you are on this bedroom. It's not rapid science. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Another benefit of spiritual growth, 
is that you accomplish, accomplish the goal of salvation. The goal of salvation is to reign with Christ in eternity or for eternity. That is the goal of your salvation. The goal of your salvation is not to clap in the church, dance in the church, be in the choir, be pastor, become minister, become what you want. That is not the goal. The goal of your salvation, my salvation, your salvation, is to reign with Christ. Say with me, reign with Christ. Reign with Christ. And the only thing that makes that visible is your continuous, continuous spiritual growth. It's your spiritual growth. You don't take your spiritual growth, you know, you take it important enough. You are truncating this goal of salvation. May you not truncate the goal of your salvation in the name of Jesus. Another benefit of spiritual growth is that we will not backslide. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10. We will not backslide. So if you take your spiritual growth serious, you will not backslide. Let, let's quickly look at Second Peter. Second Peter 1 10. Anybody there? Second Peter 1 10. Praise God. Are you there, Sister Ruth? Second Peter 1 10. Sister Gerard. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Yes. Yeah. Well, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Praise the name of the Lord. Take diligence to make your election sure. The call of God into salvation that you have received, it is for you to ensure it. Say, ensure it. Make it sure. Make it sure. And if you continue to do all these things, you will not what? You will not fall. You will not backslide. You will not backslide. If you're going to live to be 70 or 80 or 90 years and you are 30, that means you still have 60 years journey to ensure you will not backslide. It is a tragedy after being a Christian for 50 years. Then the last, last mile, that's what we call in telecommunication and IT, last mile. In the last mile, you come and pass light. Say, God forbid. No. Amen. God forbid. You have given your time. You have given your tithe. You have given, even if you don't pay that, you don't pay offering. You spend money to enter bus or buy food to come to join. You give those all things. You do it for 50 years. When it's time for you now to enjoy you will not uh, fumble, God forbid, in the name of Jesus. And you end up with, uh, with those ones that has been abusing God from, the, the, from their mother's womb. Abusing God even from when they born them. You and them now will come and be quarantined in the same quarter. That shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus. The last benefit, but not the least, of, of, uh, of uh, spiritual growth is what I call all round deadly and eternal profit. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. I will read it for us. And this is where we are coming to close. It says, For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Say all things. So godliness is profitable unto all things, without exemption. Godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of this life, that is earthly physical life in which we are now. And of that which is to come, which is the life that is coming in future. So godliness has, is profitable all around in this life and in the life to come. So there is no loss in, in, in godliness. Godliness is not a business of I make that and I make ninety percent profit. I make not, it is a, a business of I make hundred and one hundred and one percent profit. It's an all profit business. That's what this scripture is. Paraphrasing it, godliness is an all profit business. Hundred percent profit, no loss, no loss, no overhead, no minus. Praise the name of the Lord. As we summarize, as we close, what will Christianity be without growth? 
Christianity without growth, we capture it in Psalm 58, verse 8. It says, it is like a snail that dries up as it grows. Christianity, born again, whatever you call yourself, that is without spiritual growth, without maintained, sustained, sustainable spiritual growth, is like a snail that dries up as it grows. Some of you don't know snail, but some of you know what is called, uh, what is the equivalent of snail in the, eh? Slug. Uh -huh. It's not slough, slug. Amen. That is like snail. The Bible says, Somebody that is without spiritual growth is like some of you. If you know slow, when sun comes up and catches it before it borrows itself, in, it will dry up there. Die. That's what Christianity without spiritual growth is. It's like a snail, Psalm 58, verse 8. It is like a snail that dries up as it crawls. It is like a woman stillborn baby who never saw the sun. You are conceived of the Holy Spirit. You are born and stay bad. That's what spirit, lack of spiritual growth is like. What is the report of spiritual growth in summary? You manifest as the sons of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. How then can we attain spiritual growth? This is the action point. Avail yourself of every prayer opportunity and activity. Avail yourself of every prayer opportunity and activity. You don't really need to stand up from your bed to pray. You don't really need, except if lying on your bed is detrimental to your effectual prayer. In Psalm, uh, I don't know whether it's uh, 149 or so, it says they will speak from their bed. All you need is your mouth. In fact, even if they padlock your mouth, all you need is inside your heart. Your heart will be steaming. In your heart, praise the name of the Lord. In your heart. Amen. In fact, to show the devil how much you're greater than him, sometimes you sit down and cross your leg and be praying. So long as you will not sleep, you tell him, I can deal with you sitting down. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you see somebody you can beat, you don't have to sweat. Praise the name of the Lord. If you see somebody you can beat, you don't have to sweat. It's a faith thing. It's not a, it's a faith thing. Except if all those you are is tied to your faith, then that is proper. But if all those ones is just shakara, he is not going anywhere. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So spiritual growth, how do we get that? We avail ourselves of every prayer opportunity. That's why by the grace of God, we are starting tomorrow, pray your way into 2023. Every noon for the next six or five days. Make sure you are there. How do you... Ensure your spiritual growth. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Not for what you can get, for what, what he is, who he is. How do you ensure spiritual growth? Be addicted to the Bible and eat the word of God. The Bible says, Jeremiah, he found the word and he ate it. He ate he, he chopper. Praise the name of the Lord. Say with me, he chopper. chopper. Amen. Where is Sister Margaretha? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall not be missing on the day of your visitation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, how is the way you ensure your spiritual growth? Make church fellowship your priority. Make church fellowship your priority. Make church fellowship your priority. Amen. One of the things that happened in my life is that church is the high point of my life. It has always been for some years now. It wasn't always like that. It's the high point of my life. You can imagine as this church is now, as statue it is, if it's the high point of my life, when it comes to its full blossom, I will be floating in the air now with my head like that. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says if you're not uh, faithful in the small things, you will not be faithful in the... Amen. And do not ignore the day of your humble beginning. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if God is there, you should be there. That's what counts. Amen. Amen. Next way to grow ourselves in the spirit. Commit to personal and corporate evangelism. Commit to personal and corporate evangelism. We have cards we have made for people. In fact, I will show you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is my phone. Uh, this thing. You see? I have it in my phone. I have it here. I have it in my wallet. There is nowhere I go without a trap. 
because I don't know when the opportunity will arise. In fact, if I go to buy something, Sainsbury, Atos, anywhere, as soon as I collect my change from the team, I give the person the tip. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I give. That's why we made it so that you can have it. But some of you don't have it. Some of you don't even know we have it. Amen. Some of you, your prerogative is what you can get from the church. What you can get from God. And that's why you're murmuring, you're agitated. Because you're, you are monologued. No dialogue. You are monologued. God, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Then when he give you, give you, give you. Then you forget. Then you begin to sing. What have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, commit to personal and corporate evangelism. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The last but not the least, convert and exercise rugged faith in God. The Bible said the righteous shall live by his faith. Your faith is your rest. The more you have faith, the more you are at rest. The more you have faith, the more you are what? At rest. Jesus had all the faith that any person could have. That's why when there was storm in the Sea of Galilee, what did he do? He was sleeping. Peter came to him and said, Care to you that we perish. He said, Who are you and who? You and who is going to speak for yourself? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even Jonah, he had one kind of queer faith. When the storm was going, what was Jonah doing? He was sleeping in the boat. Because he had the faith that he has run away from God. So he was at peace. So your faith will determine your comportment your peace, your rest. The Bible says, if rest had been given to them in the days of Joshua, another rest will not be spoken of. But as it is, they are remained a rest for the people of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's rise up as we take these few prayers. And like I said, the outline will be on the um, church WhatsApp, so you will be able to refresh yourself on that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, kill every appetite. Appetite for worthiness in my life. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, kill every appetite for worthiness in my life. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, kill every appetite for worthiness in my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Double-mindedness. I am not your candidate. Die in the name of Jesus. Double mindedness. I'm not your candidate. Die, 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 die. In the name of Jesus. Double mindedness. I'm not your candidate. Die. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Grace to abound and to finish well. Incubate my life. In the name of Jesus. Grace to abound in Christ and to finish well. Incubate my life. In the name of Jesus. Grace to abound in Christ and to finish well. Incubate my life. Incubate my life. Incubate my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Powers that want me to remain a baby Christian longer than necessary. Die in the name of Jesus. Powers that want me to remain a baby Christian longer than necessary. Die, 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 die. In the name of Jesus. Powers that want me to remain a baby Christian longer than Away in the journey of life, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, do not allow me to fall behind or fall away in the journey of life, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, do not allow me to fall away or fall behind in the journey of life, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, do not allow me to fall away or fall behind in the journey of life, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You will pray this last one like a prophet unto yourself. I shall be a pillar. In the church of God and not a caterpillar. In the name of Jesus, I shall be a pillar in the church of God and not a caterpillar. 